Hello everyone, my name is Shalanda Chaudhary and in this video I'll show how to set up end-to-end -end TLS encryption in application gateway. However, instead of using the self-signed certificate, I'll use the CA signed certificate from Let's Encrypt. So let's start. Application Gateway supports both TLS termination as well as end-to-end -end TLS encryption. So in the TLS termination at the application gateway, TLS encrypted traffic is first decrypted at the gateway and then the traffic flows unencrypted to the backend server. While in the case of end-to-end -end TLS encryption, all the data which is passed between the web server and the browser of the users remain private and encrypted. Hence, it provides the security for the entire journey of the data, starting from the client to the backend server, which maintains the confidentiality and integrity. The architectural diagram on your screen is showing the unencrypted flow of traffic from the user till the backend servers, where application gateway is in the middle. In this lab, I'll be using the custom domain as shalender.online. So as you can clearly see in the diagram, that the user, when they are hitting shalender.com in the browser, then the traffic will go unencrypted using the protocol HTTP. And then the application gateway will forward the traffic to the web servers using the protocol HTTP itself. So that means there will be no encryption in this setup. But in this lab, we are going to set up end-to-end -end TLS encryption, where the traffic from user to application gateway and from application gateway to the web server will be encrypted. So if the traffic from user to the application gateway is encrypted, that is called as TLS termination. But in the case of TLS termination, the traffic between application gateway to the web server will be in clear text or plain text form. In the case of the end-to-end -end TLS encryption, the data is encrypted from user to the backend servers. So we'll be using Let's Encrypt CA signed certificate and we need to set up the certificate both on application gateway as well as the web servers because we want to make sure that web servers are listening on port 443. Otherwise, application gateway can't transfer the data over port 443 to the web servers. So let's set this up in lab now. I have pre-created resources like web servers and DNS zone for custom domain. So let's check the virtual machines. There are two virtual machines which are created, web server 01 and web server 02. If we click on web server 01, it's a 2019 server and I have installed IIS on this and created a default HTML page. If I'll quickly RDP to this server and open the local host, you can see it shows the name of the server and if we'll try HTTPS, it'll not work because it's only listening to HTTP right now. Same is the case with the web server 02, which is a 2019 Windows Server 2 and IIS is installed on it. And if I'll RDP to the web server 02 and open localhost in the web browser and it should show the name of the web server. And apart from this, there is a DNS zone which is created. Let's focus on shalender.online because I'll be using this one in this lab. It's showing the previous alias record, but when we have the application gateway set up and we'll change the alias record for shalender.online to be pointing towards the public IP of application gateway. So let's create an application gateway without TLS termination or end-to-end -end TLS encryption. And then we'll generate the certificates which we'll use for HTTPS protocol. Let's create application gateway. Go to the application gateways, create a new one. I'll select an existing resource group, RG Dev Application Gateway. Let's name it as AGW Dev 01. Region is Australia East and we are using the version 2. Let's disable the auto scaling and make the instance count as 1. No need of availability zone and let's select the network an application gateway subnet. It's already selected because I have a virtual network with the application gateway subnet. The condition for using the application gateway subnet is that there should not be any resource created in that subnet. Let's go to the front end, create a new IP. AGW public IP 01. Okay. Create a backend server, web server pool select 
select the virtual machines 0 1 as well as 0 2 add and in the configurations let's create the routing rule web server rule let's give the priority as 100 web server listener fronted IP to be the public and for now we will be using HTTP protocol for the backend target select the backend pool and create a new backend setting with HTTP protocol and port 80 web server setting add now the frontend IP routing rules and the backend pool is created next review and create and create creation of application gateway takes few minutes so I'll pause the video and we'll be back once it's done. Application Gateway is created now. Let's go to the resource group and go to the application gateway. And you can see a front end public IP address of application gateway. It's in the subnet application gateway subnet. If we look at the backend pool, there is one backend pool with two targets, which are the two virtual machines which we have created, web server 01 and 02. Backend settings. Right now we are using HTTP protocol with port 80. Front end IP, it's the public front end IP. For the listener, it's listening on port 80, which is protocol HTTP. And there's a basic rule which shows that the listener which is listening on the front end IP should go to the backend target using the specific backend setting which we have created. Let's grab the front end IP address and then go to the DNS zone. I'll update the alias record with the new IP address. Save. Let's check the URL shalinda.online. HTTP. and it's showing web server 0102 and now the application gateway is load balancing between server 01 and 02 but as you can clearly see it's showing as non-secure because we are using protocol HTTP instead of HTTPS. Now to set up the end-to-end -end TLS encryption I'll generate the certificates using one of the web server itself. I'm in web server 01 and this is the IS manager for web server 01. Open WinACME in web browser so WinACME is a client for Windows which is used to generate the let's encrypt certificate let's download it save extract everything and run the application WACS run anyway there are multiple ways you can create the certificate using the default setting as well as the full options using the default setting the certificate goes into cert manager and most of the times the private key is not exportable so what we'll do in this case is we'll use the full options M and generate the certificate in the PFX format read binding from IAS But right now there are no bindings so we'll provide the bindings now m manual input shell in the dot online we want a single certificate provide the verification from the memory rse key the default option is windows certificate store but instead of that i want to create the pfx format Select option 3, file path. Let's save this in C drive, number 2, so that we can provide the password. We don't want to save it to vault. 
no additional steps, no additional installation, no, and agree to the terms. Because this is a lab and we don't want to renew these certificates, so let's not provide the email address here. And the certificate is created now. As you can see, it's in C drive, shalinderonline.pfx. So let's go to the C drive. And here is the certificate. As I have shown in the slide that the certificate will be installed or used at two places. One is Windows IS server. Another one is application gateway. So we'll install the certificate for both the web servers, 01 and 02. Let's do it. Let's open IIS manager. Go to the web server. Server certificates. Import. Get the file from the C drive. You have to provide the password. Okay. Now let's go to the default website or the website which you have created for your server. Click on the bindings, add a new binding for HTTPS. Select the certificate, shalender.online. Okay. Close. Open the web browser. Localhost. So instead of using HTTP, let's use HTTPS. And you would be thinking why it's still showing untrusted certificate because we generated certificate for shalender.online, not localhost. But because shalender.online is not mapped directly to the web server, there is application gateway in between. So once we'll set up everything and finally when we'll use the shalender.online, it should show end-to-end -end encryption and HTTPS should be shown there. Now we have to repeat the same steps for web server 02. But for this, we need to take this PFX file certificate out of this web server. And for this, I have created a file share storage account. Let's go to the portal first. Storage account. There is one storage account which is created for this purpose, file share. With the name share01. Let's copy this and open in the web server. It'll prompt for username and password. Let me move this so that I can copy the password. Username is the name of the storage account and password is the access key. Let's copy this and open the same thing in that another web server 02. Provide the username, password and copy the file to the C drive. Let's open IIS manager for web server 02. Go to the server certificates. Import the file. Provide the password. Okay. Now let's go to the default site. Create a binding for HTTPS. Open the web browser. For HTTP, it's working fine. Let's check HTTPS. And it's showing as not secure, but still showing the web page as HTTPS because the certificate generated is for shalinder.online. Now our both the web servers are listening on port 443 and using protocol HTTPS. Let's go to the application gateway now get the storage account to let's download the file
file is downloaded now let's go to the application gateway so let's go to the backend setting to create a new backend setting for protocol https and port 443 because now our servers are listening on both port 80 and 443 add a new setting we'll use https so backend server certificate is issued by a well-known CA because it's less and en let's encrypt so I'll select yes but in case if you're using the self-signed certificates and you can provide the root certificate here but in this case I'll select as yes we are not enabling any cookie based affinity or connection training so let's save this so let's create a new listener for HTTPS for the front end public IP select HTTPS upload a certificate let's provide name as shalinder.online file let's get it from the downloads I'll provide the password basic listener we are not using multi-site and add now we have created two backend settings and two listener and as you can see for for the new listener which we have created there is no rule associated so let's create the rule web server rule https let's set up the priority it was 100 so let's set it up as 90 listener as https backend target to the same backend pool and we'll use the backend setting as https setting and add so once the changes in the application gateway are saved we'll open shalinda.online in browser changes are saved now let's refresh the page and now there are two different rules with two different listeners and two different backend setting so let's open shalinda.online first and it's fine because we are using HTTP let's change it to HTTPS but we got an error that it's a bad gateway and that means application gateway is not able to contact the backend servers on port 443 so let's go back to application gateway backend setting HTTPS and we have to make changes to the host name because the certificate which we have provided here is a well-known CA certificate but it is generated for shalinder.online not web server 01 or 02 so override the new host name let's provide shalinder dot online and save now the changes are saved let's go back again and refresh the page and as you can see it's showing as web server 01 and 02 it's load balancing between them and the connection is secured because we are using the CA signed let's encrypt certificate to summarize this video we first created two windows web server 01 and 02 and then installed the IS server on it later we generated the certificate using let's encrypt on one of the windows server and on server 01 and 02 we imported that certificate and those web servers started listening on port 443 on application gateway we made changes in listener backend setting and the application gateway rules where we provided the certificate and made changes according to protocol https because the certificate was generated for shalinder.online so when we open shalinder.online using https protocol in the browser the connection is secure end to end from browser till the web server so that's all for this video i hope you liked it please like and subscribe thank you so much